overlooking beautiful downtown Scranton, where this evening it is going to be the Berwick Bulldogs in here to take on the invaders of West Scranton High School. Roger Snyder along with Scott Federoff on the telecast this evening, and we're glad that you've had an opportunity to join in with us. And uh, we are expecting what should be a real good football game. The invaders of Scranton uh, basically with a three and two record and looking relatively good this season. Uh, last week tying Valley View six to six. The week before, uh, a loss to the North Pocono team, which has been counted as being one of the best teams in the area. Berwick, of, of course, the perennial powerhouse. And uh, what can you say? George Curdy always has his team up and geared for any given night. And Scott, uh, tonight, field conditions perhaps a factor. Well, Roger, you and I had an opportunity to take a walk around the football field about an hour or so ago, and we found it quite slippery, especially at the spots where you would kick a PAT or a kickoff, and uh, some of the more key, more used areas of the field were wondering, as you and I talked before the game, what that will do to Berwick's passing attack. Of course, coming in here to a West Scranton team that is absolutely feared in terms of its running attack, uh, you got to kind of give them the edge as far as field conditions are concerned because they are a running team. And if, in fact, the field conditions do take away some of Berwick's offense, uh, we could be in for a real interesting contest here this evening. The Invaders have been described as a very capable ball club on any particular given night. And let's face it, uh, any time that you've had the amount of rain that we've had, and uh, it certainly did all the while... Uh, uh, here this afternoon, this field really took on a great drink of water, and it was the kind of rain that you can soon look to alleviate the drought conditions <laughs> that have existed in the area. Really rained quite hard here this afternoon, and part of uh, the psychology and strategy, obviously, that has got to go into uh, any particular football game is you get a look of Dave, at Dave Cook there of uh, West Scranton. He is the one of the split ends and a guy that they like to go to. The captain's there meeting at the midfield area for the toss of the coin, and to finish the thought, it has been said for many, many years throughout the history of this sport that a wet field in a rain-soaked field and a rain-soaked football becomes the great equalizer. It'll be interesting to see how this particular scenario unfolds here tonight at Scranton Memorial Stadium. This is a fantastic facility, Roger. As you and I walked around, it's got a flat setter but then it's got tapered flats. Uh, the flats, of course, are the sides of the field, so it did take on water real well, but uh, when you get the amount of water that we've gotten in the last 12 hours or so, it's, it's just impossible. I mean, we are talking about dirt and grass. Uh, no matter what technology can do, it's just about impossible to get away from slippery conditions. Wes Granton has uh, won the toss. They're gonna receive, they'll defend the goal to our left and move left to right tonight, of course, as you can see in their blue and silver with uh, white numbers and uh, Berwick tonight in their white uh, traveling uniforms with the dark blue numbers and the West Grant will move as we had indicated from left to right and that actually here would be from east to west uh, very you know light that? crowd on hand I got a good nose for direction it's what happens when you've spent all the miles on uh, I've driven over the course of the years you just develop the let's nose. go that way <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as I started to mention, as you get a look across the way, there are a very sparse crowd on hand here tonight, and I'm sure you can take to the bank the fact that that was because of the rainy conditions here throughout the course of the day. And we're glad that in the event that you did make it up to see the game, that you have an opportunity to watch it right here on the Pioneer Community Television Network. Jason Sobolewski will tee the ball up. We were talking, Roger, about whether or not he'd be able to move the ball off of that wet spot, and he has. There's a puddle right there on the X. You can move it anywhere you want along that 40-yard line. You can bring it all the way to the sideline if you want. Where that's really going to come into play will be on anybody attempting to kick the point after. Here's Sobolewski's kickoff. A little squib kick. This is Fahey. Fahey at the 15. And Fahey with a nice run back out across the 35 all the way to the 37-yard line. Well, Roger, as we talked to different folks from West Granton about some of their key players, that was a name that we heard over and over again. Brian Fahey, as you look at the lineups, LaCour, Fahey, Tro uh, 
Triano. Triano, sorry about that. Cook, Egan, and Miller. And they, of course, are, are the people in the skill positions. Brian Bennett, Rob Walters, Jeff Hughes, uh, Dan Jones, a bit of a story on him, and Jim Doherty make up the interior of the line for the West Granton Invaders. Here is a give. Big hole and breaking. Out close to the 50-yard line, Joe Troiano. Boy, he is just an ever-present threat. He's got speed. He's hard to bring down. He's got some moves. And to top it all off, he's got a lot of heart. So he could really be an interesting factor in tonight's contest. Triano is senior, 6 feet, 215 pounds. And on that particular play, really showed some great speed as he burst up the middle. Triano, along with Fahey, are the setbacks. Triano in motion. Give goes inside. And that's Faye as he slips down right there to make sure that he stayed down for the dogs was number 40. That is Dave Bolpain. Gain of two on the play. One of the interesting things about, as you look at the defense, Stoker, Malowski, Carroll, uh, Ferrigno, and Walsh. The They're the guys men. up front. And in the back, Hetler, Ney, Masich, Hancock, Elms, and Harkins. This time out of the eye formation. There is the get inside. Triano loose football. And there coming up with it is Chris Zolt. Chris Zolt on the football as Wes Granton looked like they were going to be able to put together uh, some serious yardage on this opening drive. And we had said that one of the factors, wet football, wet field, and we're not saying that that's exactly what caused that, but certainly that will be a factor in this evening's contest. Has to be. Ron Paulus, Mr. Everything for Berwick, the quarterback number seven. As he gives to Mike Sobolewski, and Sobolewski stacked up. In on the play was Dan Jones, the senior at 6'5", 250. And a little bit of a story on Dan Jones. He was one of the key players that, uh, in the jointure between Scranton and West Scranton, came over here to the Invaders. Mike Elms comes split to the near side, second and ten. Now they've got trips left. Palace looks to throw to Elms, in and out of his hands. That's what we talked about during the pregame show. It's a wet ball. And, and you just never know. And with Mike Elms sure-handed, Mike Elms uh, just a tremendous all-around receiver for the Berwick Dogs. Mike Elms is a senior. He's 5'11", 160 pounds, and one of the sure-handed guys. That's one of the favorite plays. Berwick really likes that little quick look to Elms and let him match up one-on-one -on -one and see if he can turn it into some yardage. Third and ten. Palace with a slot left. In motion comes Dan Pecorelli. Palace to throw. He's got Elms. Great sliding catch. And that's the Elms Super that we've seen job this year. right there. Marty Beal made the coverage uh, tackle on him there, but Mike Elms showed that's big league stuff. <laughs> Make that sliding catch. That's why he'll be a Division I recruit. And uh, obviously, Paulus had to be right on the money with that one. He was. First and 10 for the Berwick Bulldogs. Spotted the ball, the Invader 41. And we have a whistle. As you saw there, Berwick sent a number of guys in motion. Now the official is coming over. I think he said something about that one guy didn't uh, brush his teeth this morning or something to uh, that effect. Yeah. And the coach is going to go really tell him. sure, yeah. <laughs> said, Son, you forgot your toothbrush now. You go get it. Truth of the matter is we haven't got a clue as to what he was over there talking about. I think he went, he went over and said something to the band. Maybe they played something he didn't like. <laughs> get a new selection. First and 10 for Berwick. Palace looks to throw, and this one intended for Hitler, not able to come up with it. Let's correct that. Jeff Hancock was the man, 33. 
One of the interesting things about tonight's broadcast, we find ourselves as announcers in the booth with the coaches, which gives us a, another dimension to our perspective of the game. If you hear some mumbling in the background or emotional triads, you'll know <laughs> from whence it came. Okay, Definitely five, not the five, media booth. Five, five, right, <laughs> Palace will send Pecorelli in motion to the far side. Drops straight back. Looks, has time. Fires over the middle. Complete. Once again to Mike Elms. And Mike Elms knew right where to go to get first down yardage. And Elms is inside the 30. Tackled down at the 28-yard line. Well, Roger, it looks like Berwick is going to continue with the game plan that they've used week in and week out, and it is working. The passing game appears to be there. First and 10 for Berwick. Let's get a look at Coach George Curry, the mastermind. Give him, give him a bow and one of those archery things that you put some arrows in. He looks like he's dressed for the field. And when I say the field, we're talking about the field, not the football field. <laughs> <laughs> he looks warmer than us. Yes, he does. Here's the pitch back, Ryan Mason. Mason hit at the line of scrimmage and then squirms him his way forward for about six yards on the play. Down to the 23-yard line. There's a look at Ryan Mason. George Curry didn't look too pleased with something there, Scott. I'm not sure what it was. But all in all, a nice run by Ryan Mason as he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Second down, four. Inside, Mike Soboleski. Soboleski very quickly down to the 15-yard line. And he's tackled there on the play. I believe that was Paul Tanner, number 10 on the stop. I was waiting because I wasn't sure. Here is the give inside Mason, Mason to the 10. And Mason stacked up there at the 10 yard line. Cook. Along with Bob Walter make the stop. Second down and five. Ball at the 10 yard line for the Berwick Bulldogs. Following the fumble recovery, they are looking to put together a scoring drive here. Here's Mike Sobolewski. Sobolewski spins inside the five yard line. And that appears to be good for the first down. On the way up here, Rod, you said this should be a night for Mike Soboleski, and uh, if he continues to run like Both that. Of them, Mike and Jason. Yep. yep. Brian Fahey assisting on that last tackle. And it is Jason Soboleski along with Ryan Mason in the I formation. They give it to the up back in the eye that was Ryan Mason Ryan Bennett on the stop for the invaders and Berwick with a second down goal to go from the two yard line now we're at the five minute and 40 second mark of the first period of action Scranton Memorial Stadium the scene of tonight's Scholastic Sports Showcase on PCTN Paulus, quarterback keep, takes a step left, goes behind the left guard and pulls his way into the end zone. That was Phil Carroll that he ran behind over there. And it is Paulus in for the initial score of tonight's football game. 5.26 remaining in the first period, Berwick. And we are going to get a look at that once again. We're going to stay with the kick. Palace. Kick is up. Kick is good. And here's another look at the touchdown run by Palace. You saw him take the step to the left, broke it right in behind Phil Carroll. 
and into the end zone for the touchdown. So Ron Pallas has the dogs on the scoreboard. Adds the point after seven to nothing. So a drive 26 of the first period, Berwick gets on the board by virtue of a combination of a running passing attack. And you know, one of the things here that we thought, Scott, as we were talking, was the fact that with the weather conditions being like they were, that we wouldn't see that much passing. But obviously, Berwick not afraid to go to the air there. And I guess a portion of that thinking might be in the fact that it is really not raining, so it's nothing more than a wet football you have to contend with. Here's Sobolewski's kickoff, and it is taken. That was taken by number 14. That is John Conrad. And Conrad with a decent return out to the 38-yard line where the invaders are going to have it first and 10. As we had mentioned, the rain keeping this crowd down. This is a beautiful uh, facility here at Scranton Memorial Stadium. Here is the give. The give is to Fahey. And Fahey, about a seven-yard gain, does a nice job. Well, if I was playing Sandlot football, Roger, I think I'd invite him to be on my team. And let me tell you who else I would invite to be on my, my team. As you get a look at uh, Fahey on your screen there, would be Dan Jones. He's the guy that he ran behind, and Dan Jones... Uh, at 6'5", 250, really helped to open up a big hole on the right side that time. Dan Laser is the quarterback. Laser, here is a give, Triano, and Triano met right at the line of scrimmage. Let's call that one no gain. Nice job, John Nye, the nose tackle, nose guard right there, number 25 for Berwick, uh, right there doing his job right in the middle. Tonight's game being brought to you by John and Sons Automotive, 5th Avenue in Berwick. For professional service for you and your automobile, John and Sons Automotive. Third down and four. Third and three, actually. Here is the give inside. Fahey with a big hold. Fahey foot race to the end zone. Jeff Hancock, the last man with a shot at him. Jeff Fahey. We said that you just never know with Fahey when he will be explosive. And boy, once he bounces that hole and you've got a foot race, chances are you've got points for West Scranton. Unofficially a 49-yard run by West Scranton. And a look at the extra point. Snap, good snap. The kick is up, the kick is good. And we have got us a tie ball game. And Andrea Desimone is the man who booted it through. And with the score, 7-7, seven, seven, three minutes, 32 seconds remain. This is the Pioneer Community Television Network. Keeping your family warm, Chapin Oil Service is a name you can trust. Count on Chapin Oil for fast service plus 24 hour a day, seven days a week burner service. Winter will be here soon, but your family will stay warm with a hot water and warm air heater installed by Chapin Oil. Kerosene, diesel, and gasoline are available too, and their service station is open seven days a week from 5 a.m. till 9 p.m. Chapin Oil Service, 928 East 3rd Street, Nescapec. Call 752-5891 for Chapin Oil. Just about set to go with the kickoff. Dave Cook kicks it away. Taken at the 16-yard line. Ryan Mason and Mason out across the 30 to the 32 where he is going to be upended. And Berwick will have the football first and 10 starting this series that's officially spotted for you at the 32. 
And now Berwick with an opportunity to answer back. Rod Palace. Marks the signals, gives. This is Soboleski, and Soboleski is wrapped up hard by Triano. Nice job by Joe Triano. And that time, there was just nowhere for the junior running back for the Berwick Dogs to go. Mike Soboleski isn't very big. He's a junior. He's 5'8", 150 pounds. And he's one of those guys, too, that you would call slippery. Knows how to find a hole and hit it quick. Second down nine, gain a one. In motion, Pecorelli. Here's Palace, drops back, looks to throw. Fires over the middle. And complete once again to Mike Elms. And again, what a great job on the part of Mike Elms the senior receiver. In order to contain this Berwick team, Roger, Wes Scranton is going to have to get someone on Elms that's gonna cover him a little bit more closely. They're respecting his ability and giving him some room and they're hoping to contain, but uh, he's nickel and diamond, well, he's actually he's 50 cent piecing them to death here. <laughs> more than that, yeah. <laughs> there is the give. Goes to Mason, Mason. Out to around the 50-yard line. About a five-yard gain. One of the things I've enjoyed about this stadium since we've been here, Roger, is the hot dogs were very good. <laughs> For those of you who might not know, Scott Federoff is the PCTN version of Benny Parsons. <laughs> find food, find Scott. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff Hughes, the man making the tackle on that last play for the Invaders. Berwick. Second down five. They shift, send trips right, split Elms left. Here is the look. And Paulus that time under heavy, heavy pressure. Damian Chahutsky was the man that uh, put that heavy pressure on him. And good opportunity for us to tell you tonight's game is being brought to you in part by the First National Bank of Berwick staying in touch with you with offices in Berwick, Nescapec, and Scott Township the First National Bank of Berwick third down five for the dogs you get a look at the head coach of the invaders in motion goes Hancock Here's a little pitch out to Elms. Elms with a nice job, nearly ran out of that tackle as Paul Tanner was there to make the tackle on him, but not before Elms with yet another catch here in the first quarter of action. And this one, once again, good for a first down. That's a heady play on the part of Mike Elms. He knew where he had to go to get the first down. He got past the yardage marker, came back just a little bit on the ball. Real nice play, Mike Elms, first and 10 for the Berwick Bulldogs. Here's Palace in the pocket, looks to throw, heavy pressure, now runs out of it. And turns what would have been a sack into about a one yard gain. So instead of second down and 15, it's gonna be second down, well, we'll call it 10. But boy, Palace in a lot of trouble that time, Scott, and uh, no time virtually to throw. No, he didn't have the traditional three or four seconds that you like to give a quarterback in high school football. Uh, but he played heads up ball and he came away with a no gain rather than a lost game. You know, Roger, one other thing about a Mike lost Elms. Game? Lost game. Lost <laughs> game. Did I say that? <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? Hey, I'll tell you what, add that one to the list of uh, <laughs> the list of bloopers here. Lost Scott game. Scott Roger, yeah, lost game. <laughs> Here's Pallas looking to throw over the middle once again, complete to Mike Elms. And Mike Elms with yet another sparkling play. Dave Cook was the man who made the tackle on him, recovered him, I should say. But it has been Palace to Elms, and it seems like forever Berwick has had an outstanding quarterback and great receiver. And uh, it's part of a know, feeder boy, program. Just, I guess. Mike Elms, in a lot of ways, is like a magnet. If you put the ball near him, he's going to get it somehow. Here's the first and ten play. Palace. Palace looks, 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 fires deep, 
into the end zone intended for Hancock, batted away. Intercepted. No, it was intercepted. Intercepted. Brian Fahey came down with the ball, and to be honest with you from here, it looked like that ball was simply batted away. What a job on the part of Brian Fahey. Don't you love to see all the mud on their suits like that, Rog? And that has, uh, with that play, time has expired, ending the first quarter of action. Here from Scranton Memorial Stadium. Team's gonna change ends of the field, and boy, what a dandy it has been. We promised a good one, and so far, it has been delivered. With timeout on the field, the score, seven to seven. Second quarter about to get underway. It's time to go with a winning team, John's Automotive in Berwick. At John's, you'll get professional service. John doesn't specialize, he does everything well, from oil changes to overhauls. And at only $18 an hour for labor, John's Automotive is one of the most affordable in the area. You deserve the professional service you'll get at John's Automotive. Call them today at 752-4818. John's Automotive, 1141 Fifth Avenue, Berwick. Proud sponsor of Evergreen Drivers, Cleet Spade, Charlie Clatt, Chuck Schartzer, and Bob Phillips. Just about set to get underway here. And the Invaders with a penalty. There you see the score, 7-7. Seven to seven. So now it's a first and 15. West Scranton following the interception. In motion, Triano. The give inside to Fahey. And Fahey cannot find any room to run whatsoever. Ferrigno along with the interior. Here's another look at the interception. Look at that great catch and there you can see the nice job done and we have an injury and if I'm not mistaken is that Palace? I see the seven but the official will get out of our way there. We'll try to let you know. It looks and like I believe Ron Powell is shaken up. And I think it's 76. Is it 76? I believe. Ron well, we're still checking for you and, and cannot at the present time make out the injured player's number. Whoever it is, we hate to see there we go. high we're school athletes go you. down. Yeah. It looks like 78. That's Phil Carroll. And Phil Carroll, will, uh, perhaps with a turned ankle. A key member All of I this Berwick Bulldog team. Phil Carroll, the senior, 5'10", 210 pounds and an outstanding uh, interior lineman, tough on defense, Phil Carroll. Some information passed along to us that by the time you see this on television will be old news, but worthy of mentioning, and that is the fact that North Pocono, who has not been scored on all season long, finds themselves down seven zip to Dunmore at the present time. North Pocono, a very, very tough team this year. Dan Blazer will bring his team up over the football. Blazer with the give. Fahey, nothing doing this time. Jeff Hancock along with Jason Sobolewski saw to it that he would go nowhere. Great job by the defensive down lineman for this Berwick Bulldog team, Roger. They're doing exactly what you want your Dan linemen to do. They're not getting blown out of the holes. They're just causing confusion in there and, and clogging up the works. And that's what you want a good defensive team to do. Third and 12 for the invaders of West Scranton High School. Laser. Barks the signals. Fumble on the play. And, and recovered by West Scranton. Looks like uh, 
He never had the snap completely. Loss of a couple more back to the 15-yard line, and we have an official's timeout on the field for an equipment problem. Jason Soboleski needs to adjust the helmet. And tonight's game is being brought to you by the Medicine Shop, 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick. People have come to expect quality professional care from the Medicine Shop, 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick. Punt formation, good snap, kick is away. Taken by Mike Elms at the 40. Mike Elms looks to get it behind a little bit of a wall and manages to get down to the 30-yard line, so great field position. It was Joe Triano that made the stop on him, but great field position for the dogs as they will begin first and 10 from the 31-yard line of the Invaders. It makes a big difference, Roger, when you have an opportunity to start a drive in four-down territory. Many high school plays, a uh, series of plays are designed to get a first down and three downs. Down here, you have a little bit more space. Palace pitches back Soboleski, Mike Soboleski, that is, and Soboleski with a nice piece of running barrels his way for about seven or eight yards. Making the stop on the play was six foot five, 250 pounds of Dan Jones. As you get a look at Mike Soboleski, talk about a mismatch. Dan Jones, 250. Mike Soboleski, 150. But 200 extra pounds apart. And that certainly goes a long way. But I'm still not sure at 150, I'd want to run into 250. <laughs> Second and three. That's why we're up here. Here is the give inside. And off the left side goes Jason Soboleski. Now here's a couple of brothers. One, six, three, 215, the other's 5'8", 150. They must have had a lot of fights when they were kids. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I guess. Look for like Soboleski a little slow getting up. But first and ten for the Bulldogs. Sorry, Scott. Quite all right. Appears to be fine. This is Jason Soboleski, and Soboleski refusing to go down. Look at Jason Soboleski. Ran out of one tackle, bowled over a couple of other guys, and managed still to stay on his feet. And good for a first down inside the 10-yard line at the 8, Jason Soboleski. That's a lot of meat when you get that thing cranked up and running. 6'3", 215. Boy. And Soboleski has pretty good speed. Paulus, first and goal from the 8. Pitch back. Mike Soboleski. Soboleski! Found himself a lane and into the end zone. Touchdown, Berwick. So this time Berwick comes back. A 30-yard drive for a touchdown. This time largely on the ground. So Berwick shows that they can do it any number of ways. But when they come at you, they're coming at you. There you get a look at some of the moderately wet crowd that we've got on hand tonight. Although it is not currently raining, we've been drenched. A look at the PAT. Ron Palace, it is and up. Palace's kick is good. 8.22 So our score at 8.22 remaining in the second quarter. Berwick 14, West Scranton 7. you to stop in at the Midway Quick Mart in Nescapec. Fill up with quality Sitco gas. Visit the convenience store for groceries, sodas, munchies, and more. Midway Service Center can take quality care of your car. Midway's expert mechanics can do anything from a tune-up to an overhaul. Get quality brand name tires at Midway Quick Mart. Midway Quick Mart and Service Center, Route 93, Nescapec. And Soboleski's kick is a short one. 
taken by one of the up men at the 36-yard line where the Invaders are going to have the football. First and 10, and they'll see once again if they're able to get their potent ground game back in action here. And so far, it's been uh, the fact that for all practical purposes, they play Berwick even, aside from the fumble, and aside from poor field position following a punt and a penalty, or a penalty and a punt. That's a lot of asides. There is the give. Triano, Triano loses the football. Berwick has it. John Nye, the nose tackle, comes up with it. And so for the second time in the evening, a turnover gives Berwick great field position here. And that with seven minutes and 42 seconds. One of the things about a great team, Roger, is they create their own breaks. Tonight's game being brought to you by Chapin Oil Service, 928 East 3rd Street in Nescapac. When it comes to keeping your family warm, Chapin Oil is a name you can trust. Pitch back, Mike Sobolewski. Look at Sobolewski, scoots through a big hole. Quickly into the secondary, Jeff Fahey has to wrestle him down. Inside the 20-yard line, a flag is thrown, and that looks to me like it may have been face mask. Let's see. Yes, indeed. This is going to get tacked on to the end of that fine run by Mike Sobolewski. In the defense of Fahey, that was... A very difficult to make open field tackle. It was especially he may have found himself looking at the scoreboard again in six more for Berwick. Sure, sure. Especially faced with bringing out bringing down a runner of that caliber. Sometimes you just do what you have to do to get him down. So by virtue of the penalty, it becomes a first down goal to go from the ten. The ball just inside the ten. Technically, it would be the nine. Technically. Technically, you go to the one up, but it's just inside the 10, so we're going to call it the 10. There it is again. Watch that. Long count by Palace. Gives to the up back. This is Sobolewski, and Sobolewski barrels his way down inside the five yard line. And Joe Triano from his linebacker's slot makes the tackle. But Berwick knocking on the door. With all of the weapons that this Berwick football team has to offer, it becomes extremely difficult to defend only three yards of turf because they can come at you running, passing, they can do any number of things. Very, very difficult. Jason and Mike Sobolewski. Pitch back to Mike Sobolewski. Sobolewski is he in? Very close. Did not get in. Jeff Fahey makes the tackle. Jeff Fields has got to play a proper defense event. And Sobolewski perhaps just a little slow in getting up. One of the things you and I had talked about, Roger, in this cold, damp weather, one of the toughies is uh, staying warm. Keeping yourself loose. Keeping loose. Yeah. And cramps and muscle sprains and so forth are a, a factor. Jason Sobolewski. The lone remaining setback, Powers tries to sneak it in. Does he get in? They say no. That was the same play they tried to do before. Keep in mind, Phil Carroll, the guy that normally plays that guard spot, was shaken up earlier. And it was Powers trying to sneak behind that left guard to see if he can get in. Very, very close here to the goal line it is literally fourth down and one and a big big defensive play coming for west scranton sobolewski and sobolewski on the fourth and goal play this is mike sobolewski does he get in touchdown berwick mike sobolewski second touchdown of the period so berwick gets a very small insurance policy from which to work as you get a look at number 34, Mike Sobolewski, the man with the big heart as he gets a big congratulations from his head coach, George Curry, and fellow teammates. Very, very quick in terms of hitting the hole. Mike Sobolewski, here's Palace out of the hold of Mike Elms. Wait to snap, good snap. Placement kick is good. 
So with five minutes and two seconds remaining in the first half of play, Berwick 21, West Scranton with seven. Good times begin at the Villa Capri in Berwick. Stop in and say hello to your friends. Enjoy an excellent meal featuring fresh homemade soups. You've got to try the area's best New England clam chowder. The Villa Capri serves lunch Monday through Friday from 11 till 2 p.m. and dinner from 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. Make your Christmas party reservations today. Phone 759-9000. Plan your good times at the Villa Capri, 11th and Mulberry Streets, Berwick. And just about set to go, Mike Soboleski about to kick it away. And he does kick it away. Taken on the run and all the way out to the 40-yard line is the West Granton team. We're going to pick up a number for you there on that fine run back. As we give you a look here at the touchdown run by Soboleski, there you see just barely getting in as he sliced off of uh, left guard there. Sam Egan was the man with a nice run back for the Invaders. First and 10, Dan Laser, the quarterback. Laser looks, fires for Cook, well overthrown. Cook had no chance, no chance to come down with that one. Folks here from West Granton are excited about their quarterback, Laser. He's a sophomore with some great potential. Ryan Bennett brings the team up and over the football. He's the center, senior at 215 pounds. A little bit of a staggered count. They tried to draw the Bulldogs offside. Let's see. We're going to wait on the official for the call. He says, dead ball. Yes, indeed. Berwick offsides. And so that's going to make it a second down and five. And that's going to look a little bit better to the play callers. Looks better to me. Tonight's game being brought to you by Lowry Auto Parts. For quality personal service and a complete line of Wix filters, visit Lowry's Auto Parts, 3rd Street in Nescopec. Second down and five. Sophomore quarterback Dan Laser will give inside. Fahey, Fahey, close to the first down. Nice job by Brian Fahey as a little bit of a spin on the tail end of that probably was what made the difference of getting the first down. And it is a first down right at the 50-yard line. So West Scranton putting on a drive of their own here as we come near the end of the first half of play. And here is the give. This is Fahey. Fahey this time cannot find anywhere at all to go as Steve Malowski corrals him. Good job, Steve Molaski, right around the ankles. They had no chance. Molaski, pretty good movement that time. A senior, 5'10", 210 pounds, and doing the job right there. That's a name, Roger, that we've said quite a bit over the last uh, several Berwick games that we've done. Steve Molaski, quality prospect. Laser sets his back in an eye. Gives to Fahey, the up back, and Fahey is going to lose a couple of yards. Back to the 49-yard line. One of the things that's happening in there, Roger, as we get these closer shots in the middle of the field, it's really starting to get churned up now. The initial traction that was there is all but gone as it's gotten chewed up by cleats, and uh, as you saw in that last play, it is extremely difficult to get footing. Third down and 12 is the situation facing the invaders. Kind of a chilly, brisk night here in Scranton. 
Here is Laser on a keeper, called his own number. And Gain nice of about two yards. On the, on the part that time of Dave Bopane to make the tackle as he played that defensive end slot perfectly. Perhaps I should say gain of about two yards. Tonight's game being brought to you by the Villa Capri, serving lunch and dinner daily. Make your holiday party reservations now at the Villa Capri, 9th and Mulberry Streets in Berwick. Chahutsky, the punter, kicks this one away. He's taken by Elms on the run at the 19. Looks for a little room down the left side. Cannot find any room whatsoever over there. As a nice job on the part of Chris Bindler making the defensive play for the West Scranton Invaders. Berwick with the first down and 10. We're spotting the football for you here at the 22. And Scott, one of the things that uh, perhaps a good opportunity for us to point out, well, we'll wait during halftime. We'll make a little bit of an announcement okay. here. Well, you've got my curiosity peaked. First and 10. Intended for Pecorelli, and it is overthrown as Palace rifled that one. It would have been good for about four yards. Tonight's game being brought to you by Riverview Ready Mix Concrete. Ready to serve you in Danville and Barwick with professional concrete work and precast concrete items. Riverview Ready Mix Concrete. One minute, 28 seconds remain here in the first half of play. Scranton Memorial Stadium, the scene of Scholastic Sports Showcase tonight on the Pioneer Community Television Network. Here's Powell looking to throw. Behind heavy pressure, complete to Mike Elms. Mike Elms at the 50 and run out of bounds. And boy, did Pallas show some courage and some guts to stand in there. He took a tremendous, tremendous hit and stood right there and delivered under pressure right on the money. And Mike Elms with another uh, tremendous reception has the Bulldogs into invader territory at the 48-yard line. That was some great pressure put on up front by the invaders, and Pallas just got that one away. Minute and 20 now remain. Clock is stopped by virtue of the out-of-bounds, the ball going out-of-bounds on the end of that reception. Here's Pallas, straight drop back. Again, heavy pressure, this time on the right side. Mike Daddio is the man making the reception, and Daddio gets about, mm, let's call it eight yards, maybe nine on the play. Don't you love it, Roger, when they get tackled and they slide for about four yards? Oh, I used to love it. Oh, that's great. That's, that's worth the playing games, the game right there. The games that I remember most are the games that we played in the snow or the mud and the pouring down rain and all those kinds of things. Really is a lot more fun for the kids. Not for the guy that's got to wash the uniform. High um. commercial auditions. <laughs> Here is Palace. Palace looks, 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 throws in and out of the hands of Mike Elms. Coverage on the play was supplied by Marty Beal. Tonight's game being brought to you by the Midway Quick Mart, Route 93 and Nescapex. Stop in for last-minute grocery items or a quick fill-up. Midway Shortstop Mark in Nescapex. And you saw Mike Helms along with Chris Orlando getting the scoop from the Berwick Bulldog mentor, George Curry. Let's see what he sent in by way of play. Pecorelli goes in motion. Palace rolls, chased out of the pocket, now fires deep, has a man overthrown. A matter of inches. Chris Orlando was the man. Marty Beal was the guy trying to deny the pass just off the fingertips and out of the reach of Chris Orlando. Chris Orlando's only a junior, six feet, 160 pounds. As the clock stops now with 58 seconds and Berwick facing a fourth down and one.
Sobolewski, the lone remaining running back. They give it to him, and Sobolewski looks like he's going to have the first down. See if Berwick calls the timeout. We had mentioned before here that Berwick runs. Yes, they do. Timeout Berwick. That you could have taken to the bank. Berwick runs a two-minute drill just about as good as anyone. 21-7, to 7, 53 seconds remain. Berwick on top. Lowry Auto Parts is the place to stop if you're a weekend mechanic. They have a full line of auto parts, including Wix oil filters, and a full line of belts, hoses, and tune-up parts. Plus, you can get a great deal right now in quality wood, lawn, and garden furniture and accessories. Dress up your lawn or garden with clay ornaments and quality lawn furniture from Lowry's. So for quality personal service and a complete line of Wix filters, visit Lowry's Auto Parts, 3rd Street, Nescapec. Phone, 752-5979. Fifty-three seconds remain. Twenty-one to seven. Berwick on top. They're looking for more before the half ends. Both coaches have been out giving instructions to their team. And we'll see what the end product of those instructions yield. Very sparse crowd on hand tonight. The rain keeping a lot of people away. It really was raining hard earlier on. And even the faithfuls decided to stay home, listen to the game on radio, and watch it later on PCTN. Mix up in the backfield. Lucky that one wasn't a fumble. And making the defensive play was Jim Dougherty, a six foot, 205 pound senior left tackle. He just kind of got in everybody's way. <laughs> There's, his, the, there's the story. That's the job of a big guy in the middle, right? That's Just his job. Yes, sir. <laughs> it doesn't so sound what do you, complicated. What do you do on this play? Oh, I get in everybody's way. That's my job. <laughs> Coach told me do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm not sure what the holdup is here. We don't say enough about some of those guys down in the middle, Raj. Uh, we should do more, but uh, remember that those are the guys who get nailed on every play, and they make or break high school football. And we understand Berwick had, has called the timeout here and uh, just about set to go once again. Obviously, the purpose of doing that, to stop the clock on that play. Well, that was in-depth analysis. <laughs> you can tell that Roger and I have done a fair amount of these games. <laughs> Palace will bring Feccarelli in motion. Drops back, looks to throw. Looks, looks, looks. Going for Chris Orlando. Complete at the 22-yard line. Beal on the stop once again. And the two-minute offense and, is underway. Actually, it's Berwick, one of the best high school teams in terms of executing that two-minute drill. You're about to get a look at it here. Clock starts, 32 seconds remain. Palace simply going to dump this one away. And that, of course, stops the clock. Coming up at halftime, we're going to have the presentation of the Invader Dan. And an announcement. Remind me. Okay. <laughs> of interest to fans of high school football everywhere. Oh. Well, at least those that will be able to watch our signal. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's who we're talking to, so. <laughs> I have no idea what he's going, maybe he's going to announce a new color man. Second and 10. <laughs> Here's Palace, drops back, looks, fires over the middle, a little bit of a delay, this is Daddio. Daddio inside the 10 and out of bounds at the eight yard line. Mike Daddio stayed home. I used to love those kinds of plays. You could stay home, you wait, you let everybody else go. And then you break across the middle, and hopefully everything else is cleared out. That's exactly what happened. Palace found Daddio on that little bit of a slant in, a little bit of a delay, and it is now first and goal to go. Berwick once more before the half ends. Palace looks to throw, drops back. Here comes pressure, fires to Chris Orlando over the middle, and Orlando had it and just could not quite find the handle. 
And that was one of those where you try to run before you have it. I know I would. <laughs> I know I would. I didn't have stone fingers for nothing. I, <laughs> I, I caught a screen pass one time. I lost two yards and plumbled. <laughs> uh, that's funny. But I did do a good job at reading the screen pass. Coach said, next time, don't read. Just wait. <laughs> Second down and goal. Palace looks, fires. He's got a man. That's Jeff Hancock inside the five, making the tackle and coming up to make the play, Paul Tanner. Tanner's only a junior, 155 pounds, 5'10", did a nice job on that play. And George Curry says, we want to talk about this with seven seconds remaining. Figures he has one play, and I wonder if he's going to go out and say, guys, what do you want to do? I doubt that. I doubt that, too. <laughs> <laughs> More like Actually, this we is go what for the touchdown here. What do you think? Can you do it or can't you? You know, there are some times that a coach will do that because he wants the players to be committed to the call that's been made. And uh, although it's not likely that George would do that, there are those that would. <laughs> I don't think George has to. George is one well, of those they, guys they that if you said they, they run, he they start running. That's right. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> if he were to do that, they'd say, golly, you never asked for input before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How come he started now? You okay, coach? <laughs> the invaders came to the near sideline here to get their instruction. Let's see. Berwick's going to go for it. Third down. Three yards to go for the touchdown. Seven seconds remain. That's the story right there. Sobolewski. Sobolewski, off left tackle, is he in? Waiting for the official call. And they say he did not get in. Very, very, very close and a big play for West Scranton as they can go to the locker room feeling pretty good that they have turned away yet another scoring opportunity or a scoring threat by the Berwick Bulldogs. And let me tell you, it makes a big difference going in being down 21-7 and just giving up a touchdown on the last play of the first half as it would be, uh, as it is now, where they were able to hold and they can take that 21-7 to uh, deficit into the locker room if you happen to be the invaders. That is our halftime score, 21-7. to the medicine shop will tell you we're different our caring professionals will answer questions about your medications relax at the medicine shop while we fill your prescriptions you won't have to wait more than 15 minutes or you'll get a two dollar credit on the spot at the medicine shop your health is our number one concern with free health care screenings on the last thursday of each month for conditions such as diabetes blood pressure and glaucoma people have come to expect quality professional care from the medicine shop ninth and during the halftime intermission 21 to 7 is our halftime score Berwick finding themselves on top and throughout the course of Scholastic Sports Showcase here on the Pioneer Community Television Network we hope that you enjoy the fine presentations put on by the high schools during the course of free game and halftime intermission and while Later on, during the intermission, we're going to have a bit of an announcement for you. We're going to send you down to the field now in the tremendous halftime show being put on by the West Grant Invader Marching Band.
Well, throughout the course of the football season, here we sure hope, like we said, that you're enjoying not only the fine football that has been exhibited on virtually every occasion that we've had an opportunity to be with you here on Scholastic Sports Showcase, but we hope you're enjoying also the fine presentations that's put on by many of the high school's fans. Well, Roger, you've been promising now for a certain <laughs> amount of time to unveil an announcement, and I have been curious as to what it is you speak of. Well, Scott, what we would like to do at this time is wel welcome our viewers on Channel 24, and that is for the Poconos. That's a new member of the Pioneer Community Television Network, Channel 24, serving Stroudsburg, East Stroudsburg, the entire Pocono region, and the fine folks that have an oppor opportunity to tune in on Pocono Cable TV on dial position 7. We want to welcome you along as part of the Pioneer Community Television Network's uh, stations. And very shortly, very shortly, look for within the next 30 days for us to be making a similar announcement for channel 68, which will be for the Shikshini area. That's another one of the stations. All total, there will be seven when we're all through completing the Pioneer Community Television Network uh, network of stations. And interestingly enough, for people right here that uh, may be tuning in in the Scranton area, we will also, in the very near future, hopefully by the end of the year, have on the air stations for Scranton, Clark Summit, and Larksville. And we're kind of excited about that as the Pioneer Community Television Network continues to expand. But for right now, those of you watching on tw Channel 24, in the Poconos, we welcome you along as part of the Pioneer Community Television Network and in particular to this Scholastic Sports Showcase. Welcome. Let's send you back down now to the field. your family warm, Chapin Oil Service is a name you can trust. Count on Chapin Oil for fast service plus 24 hour a day, seven days a week burner service. Winter will be here soon, but your family will stay warm with a hot water and warm air heater installed by Chapin Oil. Kerosene, diesel, and gasoline are available too, and their service station is open seven days a week from 5 a.m. till 9 p.m. Chapin Oil Service, 928 East 3rd Street, Nescapec. Phone 752-5891 for Chapin Oil. And welcome back. We are at the half, Scranton Memorial Stadium, the scene of tonight's Scholastic Sports Showcase. 21 to 7, Berwick on top as of this moment. This is what the scoring summary looked like in the first half at the 5 minute 26 second mark of the first period. For Berwick, it was Ron Powell's stepped behind his left guard and snuck into the end zone on a two yard run. 6 to nothing, Berwick Powell's tacked on the PAT, and it was 7 to nothing. Then, with an electrifying 50-yard run, it was Brian Leahy of West Scranton at the 3-minute, 33-second mark, dashing all the way to the end zone. That made it 7-6 Berwick, but Andy Desimone tacked on the point after it was 7-7. Then in the second period, in terms of scoring, it became the Mike Soboleski Show. With eight minutes, 22 seconds remaining, second period of action, Mike Soboleski goes eight yards. Palace tacks on the point after 14 to seven, Berwick. Then about three minutes later, it was Mike Soboleski once again on a one yard run. Palace tacks on the point after 21 to seven, Berwick. And on the last play of the first half, Mike Soboleski unable to get in from the three yard line and that's how the scoring ended. 21 to seven, it was Berwick as they head to the locker rooms, headed to the locker rooms here during the half. You've been watching the fine job done by the West Scranton Invaders.
entertaining what is really kind of a light crowd, not what you would expect uh, during a game that involved these two fine teams. The weather obviously a factor in keeping people at home this evening. And, you know, Scott, just as a side thought to that, one of the other things that I'm sure will contribute to the fact that the crowd here a little bit lighter than normal is the fact that the uh, Minnesota Twins and Toronto Blue Jays are playing at the time that we are uh, providing this telecast was at the time of our taping. And that probably also was a factor. People said, well, it's going to rain. And uh, because it's going to rain, I'm going to listen to the game on the radio, probably tuned in uh, either Jimmy Doyle or uh, the guys from SQV. And we hope that uh, you get an opportunity here. And we're glad that you have an opportunity to watch the game right here on the Pioneer Community Television Network. Second half, just about set to get underway. 21 to 7, it's Berwick on top. We'll be back with the second half right after this. Your first visit to the medicine shop will tell you, we're different. Our caring professionals will answer questions about your medications. Relax at the medicine shop while we fill your prescriptions. You won't have to wait more than 15 minutes or you'll get a $2 credit on the spot. At the medicine shop, your health is our number one concern. With free health care screenings on the last Thursday of each month for conditions such as diabetes, blood pressure, and glaucoma. People have come to expect quality professional care from the medicine shop, 9th and Pine Streets, Berwick. The First National Bank of Berwick, in touch with local residents for over 127 years. We'll still be here tomorrow, ready to fill your needs with quality personal service. Visit the First National Bank of Berwick at five convenient locations. We're staying in touch with you in downtown Berwick, on 3rd Street, Nescapec, on Fowler Avenue, East Berwick, on Freeze Avenue, Berwick, and on Route 11, Scott Township. Ask about our convenient service of personal touch banking. The First National Bank of Berwick, always in touch with you. Riverview Ready Mixed Concrete is ready to serve you in Berwick and Danville. Whether you're building a new home or just need some concrete work done, Riverview Ready Mix is the one to call. They feature precast concrete items like basement walls and steps. Call the professionals at Riverview Ready Mix for expert concrete work and look for building materials for sale at the Danville location. Riverview Ready Mix Concrete. Phone 752-6835 or 1-800-540-8300 with locations in Berwick and Danville over the invaders of West Scranton High School on a cold, damp, but no longer rainy evening here in Scranton, Pennsylvania. This is a field, by the way, the, uh, as you get a look at the stadium here, uh, this is a field that was used by Scranton High School uh, and Central and also by West Scranton. And of course, uh, at the present time, Scranton and West Scranton are the two schools as Central merged with West Scranton. A couple of the guys that made a significant difference here in terms of the uh, invaders is the guy that does much of the punting and also does a great job at tight end, and that's Damian Chahutsky. And also, uh, you've heard the number of... Uh, 73, that is Dan Jones. You've heard his number called quite often during the course of the first half of action here. And those are guys that came over from Central when the two school districts merged last year. Perhaps you remember much in the news about that, much to do made, I should say. As uh, obviously it's never an easy thing when you begin to realize that you no longer will have your identity as a school and as a unit and a couple of other schools about to undergo that change it's hazelton west hazelton and freeland the next year will become the hazelton area cougars as the teams have made their way back out onto the field here and you know, really, Scott, I thought throughout the course of the evening that the field would have been much more of a factor than it was. And obviously there were a couple of plays where there were loose footballs and everything, but uh, it really hasn't been that much of a factor. No, it really hasn't. I guess we've got to come back to the fact that we've got two very well-coached football teams here, and uh, good football teams can handle things like this. Uh, if, if these guys were a bunch of inexperienced, uh, poorly coached individuals, then they'd probably be slipping and sliding 
all over the place, but their coaches have them out there in the rain. They learn how to run around in the mud and how to fall so they don't get hurt. Uh, one of the factors will be, Roger, whether or not they can get warm and loose again quickly enough here to prevent some of those nagging muscle pulls and so forth that really don't take you out of the game but make your Saturday mornings unenjoyable. <laughs> yeah. And that they can do. You know, one of the reasons for the success of, of, of some teams is the fact that they practice in virtually every type of condition when you're out there. Joe Gibbs of the Redskins has always been like that. He, it doesn't make any difference. We go outside and practice, yep. and, and they've always done that, and you develop a reputation for being real grunts down in the, in the interior part of your line and everything, and just kind of enjoying that. I'm sure we all line. remember the hogs. We all remember <laughs> the hogs. Yes, we do. Joe I had an opportunity, Scott, when, when Washington won the Super Bowl. I don't remember the year. I, probably <laughs> eight or nine years ago. Had an opportunity to be in Washington and watch the game on television. I didn't get to see the Super Bowl, but watched it on television. And watched as the city of D.C. literally, uh, very slowly and methodically, very late at night, the evening game, started out with one horn blowing and then another and then another. <laughs> and pretty soon the streets were just filled with people. And uh, they were very orderly as opposed to some of those folks in Pittsburgh when their teams win. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Ryan Mason as he takes the kickoff, gets back to the 34-yard line, and, and that's certainly nothing against the Pittsburgh teams. That's just a... Now you're going to hear it, Roger. Their fans. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to hear They overturned it. cars and set buildings on fire and all <laughs> kinds of stuff like that. So what can I tell you? The shoe fits wear it. <laughs> They may have another opportunity to do some big time yelling here. The Pirates looking real good. Here's the first and 10 play. Palace pitches back. This is Sobolewski. And Sobolewski met right at the line of scrimmage. Oh, maybe a gain of one. A late flag down on that play. Unsure as to what its origin was. Somebody, somebody with a little bit <laughs> of a late hit coming in there. That's 15 yards. That's going to make it a Berwick first down. And move the ball all the way out to the 50-yard line. And Scott, you made the point many times. You can't, if you're going to beat Berwick, you can't make mistakes. Well, I'll make it again. <laughs> Berwick is just too well coached. They're, they've got too much talent to make mistakes. This is Sobolewski once again. Mike Sobolewski, that is. And Sobolewski all the way down, close to the first down. And maybe indeed has the first down. And yes, indeed it is. They're going to move the chains up, spot the football at the 40-yard line. Will be a first and ten for the dogs. What the dogs are doing on that play, Roger, is they're simply executing that fake in a beautiful fashion, and it's bringing the linebackers from West Scranton, causing them to take a step or two, and that essentially takes them right out of the play. Okay, now Bobby, they're coming our way. That's up on our way. Palace has Mason and Jason Sobolewski in the backfield. Here's the fake. Palace with his own number flag is thrown, and Palace is going to be dumped by Cook and Fahey. Palace cut it up very nicely, but a flag on the play, and let's see what the call is. Holding against Berwick. Mm. That's something we don't see much of. That's a good point, Scott. Berwick, uh, very, very penalty-free play. Uh, and again, that's just a sign of, of being well coached. They're coming their way out. When you got to know what you got to do when you go out there. And, and certainly, uh, that's been the case with the Berwick Bulldogs all season long. Palace, Sobolewski, the lone remaining setback. First down, 20. This is Daddio, complete to Daddio, and Daddio very close to the first down. All the way down to the 32-yard line, make it the 33. And that is going to bring up a second down and about three. So Berwick, right back in the thick of it. Got most of it back right there, one play. Daddio with a nice job. 
Good reception, good run. Here's Palace fakes, keeps his own number again, and Palace was hit hard, but is going to be very close to the first down, making the stop on the play. And they move the chains as Roger gets the name, so it'll be first and ten for Berwick. Yeah, Robert Walter was the guy making the stop. Robert Walter doing a relatively nice job on defense there on the right side of the line. That's Palace. Pitch back, Ryan Mason runs out of one tackle and then is going to be met by a whole host of invader tacklers. Give him a gain of four on the play, second down, six. There you yes, get a you look need at rain the... gear, huh? <laughs> well, you did at least earlier on. It was really raining hard here this afternoon. Second and six. Sobolewski and Sobolewski, the running back. Sobolewski gets it. Mike, that is. As Mike Sobolewski, this time off the right side. Oh, a couple of yards. And once again, there is Bob Walter in there on the tackle. Sobolewski on the carry. Third down, and let's call it three. Guess Several this of is one of those you got your choice: long three, short four. Sure. Oh, and Mike Sobolewski, Dan Jones says, I've met you before. How do you do? <laughs> How do you do now? <laughs> Several of the area high school contests that were supposed to be on tonight, of course, postponed. Some of them will be tomorrow night, which is Saturday. And by the time you see this, it will have been last Saturday. Correct. And you'll even know what the score is. <laughs> so we're not going to tell you. Here's Powell, drops back, fires over the middle, Daddio on that little delay again, and Daddio all the way down to the 12-yard line before he's bounced out of bounds over there by Fahey. And that's that one where Daddio, all he simply does is simply hides out just a little bit, a little bit of a delay, and then breaks it across the middle. And Scott, one of the things that sometimes a coach will do is you get a look at Mike Daddio, is he'll continue to come back at you with things that have worked until you prove that you know how to stop it. Mm -hmm. Palace, get inside, Hitler, nothing doing. Nice stop. Joe Triano on the defensive effort there, plugging up the middle. Nice inside trap play. Let's give it no gain on the play, making it a second down. Now and 10, a look at Bill Hetler. Yeah. And there's the mentor. We can, we can sweep across. You know, I bet you George Curry is, is one of those guys, you can hear his voice if you're one of his players. You know, it doesn't matter how many other people are talking. Here's Jeff Hancock, and Hancock just inside the 10-yard line, gain of maybe three on the play. Maybe that would be better stated. You better hear his voice, no matter how many other people are talking. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you will listen for my voice. And George Curry is going to ask for a timeout. Six minutes, 22 seconds. Remain third period of action, 21 to 7. The score, Berwick on top. Good times begin at the Villa Capri in Berwick. Stop in and say hello to your friends. Enjoy an excellent meal featuring fresh homemade soups. You've got to try the area's best New England clam chowder. The Villa Capri serves lunch Monday through Friday from 11 till 2 p.m. and dinner from 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. Make your Christmas party reservations today. Phone 759-9000. Plan your good times at the Villa Capri, 11th and Mulberry Streets, Berwick. 
control. We got 36 units. That is a bad help. Now. Perwick knocks on the door, 21 to 7, and they're up by 14. They want more third period of action here from Scranton Memorial Stadium on a cold and damp Friday evening. Ron Pallas will send Hancock in motion. Rolls left, now sprints up field, looks, got a man, Chris Orlando, touchdown, Berwick. And right there, the thing that made that play was Paulus took that ball down just a little bit, made it look like he was going to run. It committed the defender. He took one or two steps up. Orlando broke it to the end zone, and Paulus very, al very alertly found him there. Flawless execution. Berwick lining up for the PAT. And the kick is good. Six minutes, 16 seconds, third period. An eight yard pass, Paulus to Chris Orlando. And tonight's game being brought to you by John and Sons Automotive, Fifth Avenue in Berwick for professional service for you and your automobile. John and Sons Automotive. And so Jason Sobolewski will tee the football up once again. 28 to 7 now. It is the dogs on top. That's dogs with a A G, A W G, I should say. Thank you. I was dogs wondering. Dogs with an A W, not with an O. Good kick by Sobolewski. Sends the man all the way back to the nine-yard line. Runs it back out to the 23. And Sobolewski makes the tackle. Good run back that time. By John Conrad. Conrad did a great job to go back and retrieve the ball and did a nice job of running it back after he got it. We have an official's timeout on the field. Five minutes, 58 seconds. Remain here, third quarter of action. Once again, we welcome our new viewers on channel 24. In the Poconos, looking forward here to the time when we'll also be on with there you had a look at the touchdown once again as Chris Orlando and Ron Pellis linked up for the score. Give goes inside. Triano was the ball carrier, got out to the 25 yard line. That's a lot of yardage, Roger, just on a dive play like that, where essentially what they're doing is just getting on the rear end of that tackle and following him as he drives through the defense. So uh, one of the few times tonight where uh, the Berwick defensive line was taken aback for about four or five yards. With Scott Berlin making the tackle for the dogs. Berlin is six foot, 177 pound junior. Here is Laser. Laser. It is complete. Right in front of Coach George Curry. Sam Egan was the man who caught it. And had Egan not caught it, George George Curry has proved in the past. Yes, he, he has. Can. He did it last week or the week before. I don't remember. Coach made that great play along the sideline. Here you get a look at the West Sam Snyder Egan. staff. Love to see that mud. <laughs> nice charcoal pants. Yes, you got it. Here is the give inside. And that is Fahey. Brian Fahey doing a great job this evening. 
Wasn't able to get much going there as Kevin Ferrigno with a nice job of clamping down in the middle as and that was planted a, inside. A big stick, Roger. It, it didn't look real impressive from our vantage point, but there was an awful lot of motion that stopped all of a sudden, and uh, the stopping point didn't give way. So you know that that was a pretty big stick. <laughs> Kevin Ferrigno able to do that at 6'2", 210. Laser is going to be sacked as he tries to roll out. Malowski was there. Along with Dave Bopain. And a loss on the play. Back to the 33-yard line. Three minutes and 50 seconds remain in the third period of play. And since a tied first period, it has been Berwick coming back and essentially dominating. Steve Malosky playing again a consistent game for you. Here is Laser. Gives inside. And Faye cannot find anywhere at all to go. Stopped by the middle of that Berwick defense. Malosky along with Chad Fetter. Fetter doing a nice job there. He's only a junior two, 5'10", 180. Chahutsky in punt formation. Gets the kick away, looking for the fair catch is Mike Elms. Mike Elms is looking like he's uh, getting tough to spot down there, Scott, as he's been rolling around in that mud. And All right. That'll make one of you former linemen happy. <laughs> First and 10 for the Dogs. Berwick's offensive unit takes the field. It's developed into a pretty nice night for high school football. Here is the give. Ryan Mason looks to find a hole, and there's nowhere to run. Nowhere to run. That was just one of those one of those plays, Roger, where the defensive uh, formation just had the right call for the play that happened to be called on offense. That happens every once in a while, where the defensive lineman happened to be in the gap that the offense was shooting for, and. Uh, no gain. Well, I guess they got a little bit of a gain. Looks like about a yard. Pitch back, Mike Sobolewski. Sobolewski off the left side. Tackle on the play by Brian Bennett. All 215 pounds of him. So we've got a third at about five to go. That's one thing about Berwick. When you stop them with a no or a one-yard gain, they come right back on the next play and get some of that real estate back and bring them right back where they need to be. Palace has Dedio on the wing. Calls his own number, rolls off the left side. And is going to have a first down right around the 40-yard line of the West Scranton Invaders. And Berwick has invaded West Scranton territory at the 40. Again. Again. Make it the 38. There you saw the spot of it. You get an idea there. It really, honestly, and truly a sparse crowd. And as I look across the way, Scott, uh, a number of umbrellas are up. And uh, apparently has begun raining just a little bit here again. Here's the give once again inside. Maybe they're prevention umbrellas. That could be. Just in case. That was Bill Hetler, the ball carrier. There you get a look at big number 77. Oh, it's Joe Walsh. 
Here's a pass complete to Mike Elms, and Elms with yet another sparkling catch. Is it good for the first down? Yes, it is. You don't have to bring the chains across for that one, making it convenient, Mike Elms. He said, ah, half a football length, I'll take that. And another first down for the Berwick Bulldogs. 28 seconds remain here in the third quarter of action. West Scranton, Berwick. It is Berwick on top, 28-7. And tonight's game being brought to you by the First National Bank of Berwick, staying in touch with you with offices in Berwick, Nescapac, and Scott Township. First National Bank of Berwick. Mike Elms splits wide to the right. Here's the give inside Sobolewski. Sobolewski can't find any running room whatsoever. Big Jim Dougherty, six foot, 205 pounds of him, plugged that hole right up. Now there's an even matchup. Dougherty and Sobolewski. Sobolewski, a couple of pounds more. And you see it, quarter has come to a conclusion. Berwick, 28, West Granton, 7. Lowry Auto Parts is the place to stop if you're a weekend mechanic. They have a full line of auto parts, including Wix oil filters, and a full line of belts, hoses, and tune-up parts. Plus, you can get a great deal right now in quality wood, lawn, and garden furniture and accessories. Dress up your lawn or garden with clay ornaments and quality lawn furniture from Lowry's. So for quality personal service and a complete line of Wix filters, visit Lowry's Auto Parts, 3rd Street, Nescapec. Phone 752-5979. Yeah. Yeah, the Fourth quarter about to get underway. 28 to 7, Berwick on top. They're driving. Pitch out. Left side, Ryan Mason. Inside the 25 to the 23. Jeff Hughes, the man on the bottom of the pile for the invaders of West Scranton. Tonight's game being brought to you by the Medicine Shop, 9th and Pine Streets in Berwick. People have come to expect quality professional care from the Medicine Shop, 9th and Pine Streets, right in Berwick. Third down, six. In motion goes Elms. Pallas looks complete. Pecorelli, Pecorelli, first down yardage to the 15, stopped on the play by Paul Tanner. And Berwick looking for yet more. First and 10 for the Berwick Bulldogs. Spot the football at the 15 yard line. Here is the give inside, goes to Jason Soboleski, and boy, does he attract a crowd. Part of that crowd being 65, Brian Bennett, along with Brian Fahey, as the duo of Brian and Brian gang up on Jason Soboleski. Now, we've been doing this at about eight miles from the hat. I mean, you know, they're just walking for their home. Gain of about two yards on the play. Second and eight. Give Mike Sobolewski, slippery Mike Sobolewski inside the 10 yard line. Tackled on the play by Jeff Hughes. This Berwick team is just so completely difficult to defense against because you really can't key on any one or even any two players because there are so many offensive threats that you've got to respect just about everything that they show you and that really spreads out a high school defense. Third down three. Pitch back Ryan Mason met at the line of scrimmage and a great second effort on the part of Ryan Mason. See where they spot this football. That's going to be very close to the first down. 
And they say, no, not quite. So a big play that time for the Invaders. Keep in mind, they denied Berwick a touchdown opportunity right at the, they denied him an off, they denied him a touchdown, I should say, right at the conclusion of the first half of play. And let's see what Berwick comes with. Keep your eye on Ron Pallas. Nope, Sobolewski, Mike Sobolewski, very, very close. And again, this is going to depend upon the spot of the football, but it did appear as though he had it. And they give it to him right at the five yard line, and indeed, yet another Berwick first down. This one will be goal to go. So Berwick knocks on the door once again. Sobolewski and Sobolewski, Jason and Mike in that order, down and up back in the eye. Mike Sobolewski all the way down to the one. Chahutsky on the stop. Second down, goal to go from the one for the dogs. staying on the ground pretty much during the course of this drive, eating up time. They give inside. This is Jason Sobolewski. Jason Sobolewski with a tremendous second effort. He was stopped at the line of scrimmage and then simply rolled and kind of sliced into the end zone. Jason Sobolewski, that was a tough one yard run. PAT attempt now for Berwick as the Bulldogs line up. Here's the kick. It's up and good. So Berwick widens the margin as you get a look at the touchdown run and the second look effort right second there. Effort right there, and that was what did it. Up until that time, Palace was not in he was stopped and it was just that great second effort and that's something that i'm sure uh, when you come out to practice you can't get away with giving less than a second or a third effort when you play for george curry and congratulations to george on recently being inducted into the luzerne uh, county hall of fame and uh, our congratulations go out to him congratulations on that fine honor Sobolewski. This is Fahey. Fahey crosses the 30 to about the 34-yard line before he is wrapped up down there. Tonight's game being brought to you by Chapin Oil Service, 928 East 3rd Street in Nescapac. When it comes to keeping your family warm, Chapin Oil is a name that you can trust. And so now it's the clock that becomes the factor. First and 10 for the invaders. Stop, stop. You saw the heavy pressure come. He unloads it. This is Triano, and Triano is going to be close to the first down at the 45-yard line, and indeed is good for the first down. Stops the clock as well. Heavy pressure that time on Dan Laser, the quarterback. Boy, he is just quite an athlete, though, Triano. He just does a fantastic job. A lot of heart, a lot of speed, a lot of strength, and a lot of skill. And all of that equals a fine athletic specimen. Laser with the pitch. This is Fahey. Left side. Tries to cut it up and does cut it up for about five yards. John Nye on the tackle for the dogs. Call it second and five. Second and four. 
Tonight's game being brought to you by Lowry Auto Parts for quality, personal service, and a complete line of Wix filters. Visit Lowry's Auto Parts, 3rd Street, in Nescopec. Here's the second and five play. Did somebody move? Yes. <laughs> somebody move. Let's see who did. Mr. Official, tell us, please. Who's the culprit? Yes, it was Berwick. Dave Nash didn't think so. <laughs> he said, I've drawn. He drew me. He drew me. One game, one thing that this game has been lacking is a lot of penalties. We've moved right on through. The clock has kept moving. It's been a very penalty-free game. That one gives the Invaders a first down at the 45-yard line of the Bulldogs as they have invaded now the enemy territory. Here's the give. Very quick hitter. This is Triano. And Triano gets about six yards, making a second down and four. Joe Triano is the son of the principal at West Hazel, or at West, Hazel, West Scranton High School. Boy, now you're in trouble. We'll get our locales right. <laughs> well, maybe his desire is to be a high school administrator. You never know. Follow a dad's footsteps. He'd probably be a good one. If his heart on the field is any indication. Laser pitch back. Fahey, Fahey tries to cut it up, and he's going to be close to the first down. Again, this will depend upon the spot. Nice defensive effort on the part of, part of Scott Berlin. First down, Scott Berlin is a junior, 177 pounds, six feet tall. Anchoring down that left end, left defensive end spot for the dogs. Laser. Give. Triano. Nothing doing this time. Talk about textbook tackling. Kevin Ferrigno. Again. Put my name in the book when you say textbook tackle on that play. The quarterback here, Dan Laser, only a sophomore, 6'1", 150 pounds. And he was one of the kids that last year was at uh, Central. Central. Central Scranton. And when Central Scranton closed and became part of the West Granton team found himself playing for the Invaders. And we have an interception. Chris Salt steps right in front of the intended receiver, Damian Chahotsky. Nice interception on the part of Chris Salt. This West Granton program looking for big things from Laser. Tonight's game being brought to you by the Villa Capri. Serving lunch and dinner daily. Make your holiday party reservations now at the Villa Capri. 9th and Mulberry Streets in Berwick. Ron Pallas says, wait, something's wrong. Time out, time out. And with four minutes and three seconds remaining, here in the fourth quarter of action, our score, 35 Berwick, 7 West Scranton. This invites you to stop in at the Midway Quick Mart in Nescapec. Fill up with quality Sitco gas. Visit the convenience store for groceries, sodas, munchies, and more. Midway Service Center can take quality care of your car. Midway's expert mechanics can do anything from a tune-up to an overhaul. Get quality brand name tires at Midway Quick Mart. Midway Quick Mart and Service Center, Route 93, Nescapec. There you get a look at the referee core. Wonder what they write down there. Let's see. What can we put Bread, on that pad? milk, Let's eggs. Write this. <laughs> the, 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 the referee says, write this. Joe Triano will probably graduate as the valedictorian of his class. <laughs> Fact. 
Ryan Mason gets the nod as he goes off right tackle. And in the event you often wonder what they actually do right down on those things, there you go, now you know. We have a flag on the play. <laughs> holding against the dogs. Hold that dog, hold that dog. No. <laughs> An injured and player Scott's on the KC field. Eats them. But that's D-O-G, not D-A-W-G. <laughs> Somehow. How many how many <laughs> hot dogs would you like, Scott? Oh, start me with three. That'll hold me until we uh, officially open the doors of the concession stand here. <laughs> I got to tell you, when I was a kid, we used to, our, our American graffiti days, the strip where we used to cruise, legally I might add, <laughs> <laughs> was up and down Northampton Street in Easton, and there was always, we have an injured ball player, we'll identify him for you in just a minute, uh, as soon as we're able to do that. But we used to cruise up and down Northampton Street, and it was always a traditional stop at uh, what at the time was James on the Delaware, more commonly known as Jimmy's Hot Dog Stand. And uh, still on occasion, when I get to Easton, I always make it a point to stop at Jimmy's. And uh, they have since became a Pennsylvania firm, as they have moved over to the 25th Street Shopping Center. Ooh. And if you ever have a chance, the best dogs in the area, I'll tell you their secret, they deep fry them. Ooh. <laughs> well, let's Don't go. Don't watch your cholesterol, but... <laughs> the man shaking up on the play. Number 52. Larry and Hewitt. There you get a good look at him. And he has made his way off the field under his own power. That's a good sign. Just shaking up just a little bit. Dante Pecorelli, now the quarterback for the Dogs. Pitches back to Ryan Mason, who slices inside for a gain of a couple. There's the new quarterback, Dante Pecorelli. He can catch, he can block. He can throw. He can throw. And run. I wonder where George comes up with all these guys that can do all those things. He creates them. They always say, you know, you throw away the mold. <laughs> wow, did Ryan Mason get socked. That was Brian Bennett. Woo! <laughs> and he's been all <laughs> over defensively. Talk about a 215-pound forearm to the head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and he enjoyed every minute of it. He just wants you to know. Ryan Mason didn't. <laughs> He says, hey, that's what they pay me for. But that's all right, coach. Don't take me out. I want to stay right here. <laughs> Just let me try it again. Yeah, <laughs> let me see if I can duck under that clothesline next time. Third and 13. Sobolewski can't find anywhere at all to go. Another Chuck great Husky example. Was there in so was Triano. That's another great example of what a defensive front can do when they manage to clog things up in there. Uh, you saw the runner get to the line of scrimmage and literally have to stop because there just was nowhere to run and wait for the linebackers to come in and end things up. But that play is wholly credited to that defensive down lineman. And here's something that we haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> Ron Pallas in punt formation. Good snap. Palace gets the kick away. Good kick. Going to be fair caught by Brian Fahey. And Wes Grant is going to have the football one final time, perhaps. A minute and 49 seconds remain in the football game. And they're going to see if they can't add and make the score respectable. Dan Laser has been in as quarterback all the way. Dave Cook comes split to the near side, first and 10 for the Invaders. Here's Laser, looks to throw, fires, has a man, nice catch. Damian Chahutsky. By the way, we're not mispronouncing that young man's name. It is Chahutsky. <laughs> Had we not been clued, we would be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> C-H. 
or C-I-C-H-O-C-K-I, Chahutsky. Because that's what they told us. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> About three different people said that. <laughs> and don't mispronounce that guy's name. And if you noticed earlier on, we had a shot of uh, number 88's mom sitting in the stand. So you see, we did get it right. Here is Laser looking to throw, fires. What a catch! By Sam Egan. That'll make Talk the highlight about. film. Talk about concentration on the football. Whoa. And now he's got to run the play in. And on his way over there, now watch this as we'll give this to you again. Watch this catch on the part of Egan. It was tipped. He kept his eye on the ball, and look at that. He did it again. Laser rolls, sets up, looks to throw. <laughs> Flag on and the a, play. And a guy that's familiar with completions, but not <laughs> Mike Elms comes down with it, and we're going to have a flag on the play. Mike Elms says, I don't care who throws it. You put it up, I catch it. <laughs> that's what Coach told me to do. Yep, he said, you put it up, I catch it. <laughs> I think we have an interference call here against Berwick. Show us again, Mr. Official. What was that? Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Raj. Berwick didn't say thank you. So now we didn't think that was right. An interference in high school is a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, so it's not going to be spotted down at the one. Laser. Pitch back. Brian Fahey, hard run inside the five to about the three. Timeout, West Scranton, 41 seconds remain. Well, it's all academic, 35 to seven, but we'll be back in a moment to see if West Scranton can add to their point total. Berwick, 35, West Scranton, seven. First down, goal to go. Here's the pitch. Brian Fahey. Did he get in? No, he did not. Very close. And once again, West Scranton asked for a timeout. They want this touchdown. Relatively young team, young quarterback, only a sophomore. Sam Egan's done a great job tonight, too. A couple of great catches and run backs. He, too, only a sophomore, not very big, but certainly plays a lot bigger than his 145 pounds. Clock is stopped, 34 seconds remain in the football game. Actually, the weather has not been all that bad here this evening as the rain has stopped and held off throughout the entire course of the game with the exception of a slight drizzle back during the third quarter. And, and all of the ADs in the area who canceled their games for tonight are saying, doggone it. We should have played. Should have played. Of course Actually, they... I think, Scott, they wanted to stay home and see the Twins and the Blue Jays. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be out there taking tickets and counting money. Wouldn't have been much money to count tonight anyway. Laser to Fahey, lunges into the end zone, touchdown West Scranton. So West Scranton shows a certain amount of team character as they come back with the will to succeed and get in and at least get a couple of more points on the board. As this See what game they do here draws to a close 35 to 13 and 30 seconds remain on the scoreboard they're gonna go for two no oh, gets it away complete for the two-point score a couple of sophomores link up laser to Egan and let me tell you replay is of the touchdown. There you get another look at it. 
And let me tell you, these sophomores are going to be some kids to be reckoned with in the years to come. Dan Laser, a real nice job here this evening. And Sam Egan has made some sparkling plays, uh, some good catches, and he had a couple of real fine runbacks. Some kids that you're going to want to remember their names. He's going to rank right up there with Reuben Sherman at Funcanic, another name that you're going to want to remember uh, throughout the course of the next two years. To tee it up, Dave Cook. Thirty seconds remain on the scoreboard. We want to say thank you for being along on this edition of Scholastic Sports Showcase on PCTN, the Pioneer Community Television Network. Picked up by Jeff Hancock, who simply goes to one knee. Flag is down on the far sideline. And basically the only thing that has to be determined here yet is not even the final score. It's been determined. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take to call a final. Personal foul against West Scranton. To those of you who have, for the first time, been able to tune in in the Stroudsburg, East Stroudsburg area, Mount Pocono, Pocono Summit, Long Pond, all throughout that particular region. We're glad that you've had an opportunity to be along on this, what would be for you the initial showing of Scholastic Sports Showcase. You'll find great sports here on PCTN, like the checkered flag racing series. We have a number of events of interest. As you get a look, as the scoreboard counts down, that's it, history. 35 to 15, Berwick. The winners over West Scranton. And again, for those of you who are able to tune in on Pocono Cable TV on Dial Position 7, we welcome you as well to Scholastic Sports Showcase here on PCTN. Well, that's the way that it's going to end up, 35 to 15. And we'll be back with a quick wrap-up as to how those 35 to, 30, or 35 to 15, uh, that score came about. We'll give it to team, John's Automotive in Berwick. At John's, you'll get professional service. John doesn't specialize. He does everything well, from oil changes to overhauls. And at only $18 an hour for labor, John's Automotive is one of the most affordable in the area. You deserve the professional service you'll get at John's Automotive. Call them today at 752-4818. John's Automotive, 1141 Fifth Avenue, Berwick. Proud sponsor of Evergreen Drivers, Cleet Spade, Charlie Clatt, Chuck Schartzer, and Bob Phillips. Just a real quick recap of how they scored at 526 of the first quarter. It was Berwick on the scoreboard first. Two-yard run by Ron Palace. He tacked on the point after 7-0. Brian Fahey with a great 50-yard run at 3 minutes 33 seconds of the first quarter. Made it 7-7 as Andy Desimone tacked on the point after. We headed to the second period, tied up 7-7. Mike Soboleski owned that second period as he scored twice, once at 822, once at 502 remaining. One an eight-yard run, the second a one-yard run. We headed to halftime 21 to seven, and the half ended up with Mike Soboleski being stopped short of the goal line on a fourth down and inches play. Then with 616 in the third period, Palace, an eight-yard pass to Orlando. Palace tacked on the point after 28 to seven. In the fourth period, Jason Soboleski got a one-yard run, made it 34-7 Palace. Again, the point after, 35-7. And then with 30 seconds left, Brian Fahey, who played a great game, scored his second touchdown of the evening, made it 35-13. A pass from Laser to Egan, added on the two-point conversion, and that is the final score. 35-15, Berwick on top. And we're glad that you've been along on this edition of Scholastic Sports Showcase. For the entire PCTN crew, Scott Federoff, the whole guy, the whole gang of guys in the truck, and the great job done on the part of our camera people on the sidelines as well as high and top 
Scranton Memorial Stadium, this is Roger Snyder saying thank you once again for tuning in to this edition of Scholastic Sports Showcase. Have a good evening.